928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend Overnight. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Stumbling down the road with Bridget Lynn Dolgoff as she carries stones, digs holes, and wheels her shovels on her way. This road is the real path. It is never easy and never clear, but always entertaining. This journey has not been a seated event as Bridget walks, runs, stumbles, carries, digs, drags, laughs, fights, sings, prays, dances, kicks, screams, and oftentimes falls. <laughs> Well, I guess I might be on. Welcome. We're here at freedomslips.com, revolution.radio, and we are listener supported. <coughs> yes. Oh, I haven't talked to any individuals. I've only talked to humans, so it's more or less like uh, <laughs> I haven't really cleared my throat. Even though I kind of cleared it yesterday. Oh, my gosh. After my show. Uh People are just out to poison our existence in life. It's just... <laughs> it's just horrifying. To even consider how much we don't give a crap about life. And the things that live in it with us, because of us, and by us. I mean, oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> on my radio show, I have five days a week on Studio B, two to four Eastern Standard Time, Adventures of a Feral Hippie. I have a master fetish about hummingbirds. Okay, one of my first tattoos, a hummingbird. Because in the Native American, it represents joy and female knowledge of wisdom and power. And basically, you don't mess with my hummingbirds. <laughs> I was really concerned this season that they weren't coming in as quick as they normally would. But then again, you know, everything's in its extinction level process. So I'm just thankful that basically the extinction of the babies, the hummingbirds, my friends, has not taken such a dump because to me we're here for life we're not here for death sure death occurs I mean there's stuff going on all the time is dying but that's all a process like some plants only live so many months and some plants live for years and the ones that are, have lived for eons of thousands of times are dying because of the condition of our attitudes and environment on this planet 
So, I just wanted to communicate a little more about hummingbirds. Because they are my fetish, I really do. But it's the live ones. I mean, the only other hummingbird I have, okay, I do have, um, I think, an earring that's a hummingbird. But I just don't buy stuff with hummingbirds on it. Because to me, that's like, you know, I don't need ideology. I have it on tattooed to me. That's all that matters to me is that I got it on me. So when I do a native sweat, if I would ever do one again, which I don't think I will, <clears throat> just due to reasons of the physical being doesn't work the old ways. But a hummingbird is a joy little sister, nectar you crave. All the sweetness of flowers is the love you gave. Well, <laughs> this is from a bear's book, Bear and Company, Medicine Cards by Sams and Carlson. This book is so old, there is no binding to it. Each page is almost independent of its other pages. <laughs> so, this book has been used in many, many hours of contemplation. That's right. Hummingbird is associated with the ghost skirt dance. Shirt dance. That's a tired term. Shirt religion, okay? Native American ghost shirt religion which was taught that a certain dance done properly would bring about the return of the animals. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that just be great? That, that would just be something. And that white people would disappear. <laughs> now that's a little far-fetched, but hey, okay, I get it, because they effed you over. That's right. So yeah, I could see that you might want some repercussion from those actions. Sure. But once again, the original people would know the joy of the old ways. In the Mayan teachings, hummingbird is connected to the black sun in the fifth world. Hummingbirds can give us the medicine to solve the riddle of the contradiction of duality. You know, the in, the out, the on, the off, the black, the white, you know, duality. Everything with its equal and opposite. The summer hummingbirds awakens the medicine flowers. Hummer sings a vibration of pure joy. Flowers love hummingbirds because the nectar sucking brings about the reproduction of their future families. Plant flowers, plants flowers, and I've become a hum plant flowers and live because of hummingbird. Okay. okay. Hummingbird can fly in any direction, up and down, backwards and forwards. Hummingbird can also hover in one spot and appear to be motionless. Great Spirit creates hummingbird to be slightly different from other feathered creatures. Because of their magical qualities, hummingbird feathers have been used for millennium in making love charms. And that the hummingbird conjures love that no other medicine does. And that hummingbird feathers opens the heart. Without an open and loving heart, you can t never taste the nectar and pure bliss of life. To the brother and sister hummingbird, life is a wonder of delight. Darting from one beautiful flower to another, tasting the essences and radiating the colors. If hummingbird is your personal medicine, you love life and its joys. Your presence brings joy to others. You join people together in relationships which brings out the best in them. You know instinctively where beauty abides and near or far. You journey to your idea. You move comfortably within a beautiful environment and help others taste the succulent nectar of life. Hummingbirds hold the flow of beauty which is delicately inlaid with gold and silver flowers, pearls and precious jewels. Hummingbird disdains ugliness or harshness and quickly flies away from discard or disharmony. If hummingbird has flown into your cards, you get ready to laugh magically and enjoy creator's many gifts. Drop your judgmental attitude and relax. Hummingbird will no doubt give you a flash of spirit darting here, there, and everywhere. Get ready for a new burst of energy which may send you Senses reeling. 
Hummingbird bears celestial music and is harmony with it. Hummingbird may invite you to an art museum or a concert. Hummingbird, oh, I got invited to a poker game. Anyway, um, Hummingbird <laughs> energetically embraces the highest aesthetics. Never be coarse in front of a hummingbird, for this is a fragile medicine which may have no understanding or worldly affairs. Beauty is the target, and a hummingbird's mission is to spread joy or to be destroyed. Hummingbird quickly dies if cage caught or imprisoned or poisoned. Because that's what the landlord was doing, poisoning my hummingbirds. I had a mishap. I mean, I just kind of turned devilish. I did. I just, I couldn't believe that after I've already explained to him, because I read about it on one of my shows for probably over an hour, of how to care for hummingbirds. And what does this guy do? He goes and puts pomegranate juice in the sugar water. <sighs> for one thing... Hummingbirds don't drink juice, they drink nectar. And it's not high fructose corn syrup, or is it? Um, that basically is, um, okay, uh, anyway. So yeah, Mona kind of lost it. Yep, and he's never seen me lose it before. No, because I'm pretty well tolerable of all kinds of things. Yep, yep, yep. But not when you're poisoning life in front of me. And the whole funny thing is, is I was just waiting for after my show because I already made sugar water to put it into the container. <laughs> That's all. I mean, Just to try to help keep life going. Because to me, it is life. Beauty is life. I pull weeds to feed the goose. That saves me some dollars, or at least gives the goose a treat. Yes, I have a goose. A big, white, frilly, feathered goose. He's my friend. I saved him from abuse. Yes. So I've had him about four years now, and... He is my friend, and I try to take as best care of him as I can, because that's part of the beauty of life, is sharing living. You know, and so, but of course, since I'm in semi-county, Santa my city, I have to keep him penned up, which I don't like, because I used to be able to go and, um, uh, okay... to go and uh, be with him where I could pet him even though he didn't like it because he thought a hand coming to him was uh, something to be in fear of because of who had him before so but we're still buds I mean you know every so often I get to pet him and he's kind of like ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I would have loved to have been able to raise him where I could pet him and you know be his buddy but that isn't what happened and that's okay but, yep, how many other things have I just really care about? The animals, the dogs, the everybody's, everything, even the bees. I mean, I have not seen, at least to my knowledge, one honeybee. A few of the carpenter bees that they call bumblebees, but, uh, and I think I've seen some tiny mason bees, because there's all kinds of bees. But for the honeybees and for my plants, oh my gosh. I basically have uh, had things happening to my plants that I've never seen happen before. And I've been in horticulture over 50 years. So the whole situation is, is it's nothing that I know that I'm doing different it's something else being an influence differently. So for me to calculate, try to figure it out and do all that, yes, my mind goes in many directions. Is it too much sun? Is it chemtrails? Is it somebody else around the house who's spraying stuff who doesn't care that they're spraying it on my plants? 
Yes. But August is the hardest month to grow things because it's one of the hottest for one thing. But like any time you try to grow anything, February and August are the two times that you really just don't have a whole lot of success. And that can happen in any temperature zone. Of course, 40 of those years, it was in St. Pete, Florida, so it was a whole different kind of culture and landscape. (laughs) I keep seeing these huge acorns coming off trees, though, which is really cool. But I don't want to believe or think or even put the notion to being um, valid. (laughs) And sometimes they'll drop their fruit just because they know they don't have long to live and they pray that the future of the fruit does what needs to be done to keep going. Because the species, each species of trees, plants, animals, whichever, that's all we're here to want to do is to procreate and make a better future for what it is that's going on. It just, uh, and I know it has a lot to do with attitude change. I try my best not to take any of this personal, but uh, don't poison my hummingbirds. (laughs) Do not touch the feeder again. I'm sure somebody might have gotten that message that I will take care of the hummingbird feeders. And I know it just seems like a lot of BS, right? Oh, they're just hummingbirds. No, they're not just hummingbirds. And I read that to you, so you know they're not just hummingbirds. They are here to produce and provide joy, and just to hear them zing around your head, and and to do these other zings and chucks and clicks, and, you know, just the beauty. Oh, my gosh. The beauty of the hummingbird is amazing. To see its iridescent white and blue and red throat. Oh my gosh. It's just amazing. Yep. How could we just and not want to put and provide life for the life that's here? shared with I just don't get that nope nope the disrespect of life let's poison it it don't matter (laughs) even though it's a part of the fabric of your makeup and that your life has a whole lot of things that it has to deal with that basically You're going to have to figure out that you want it that way or you're going to want to change it. Are you going to want to live or are you going to want to add to the destruction? Well, welcome, Lenny. I want to change things. I don't want to live the way we live anymore. I want things like quit the stupidity of Skype because Skype should have been able to handle what we asked it to handle, but it didn't. Skype and Discord seem to have a running pissing match. And so when one controls the phone, the other one can't do what they do. So they just jack into the other and mess things up for everyone. So it's really annoying to have to reboot just to clear everything to make it so that I can receive a phone call. Well, it's where you're at, isn't it? I don't know. I think it was the fact that I was in a meeting on Discord and that Skype couldn't break through the Discord screen to let me know that there was a message, which usually Skype breaks through everything and says there's a message. It pops up on your screen. Right. Huh. Not knowing that there was a message and waiting for a phone call, it finally dawned on me that maybe... I was in a place that couldn't be reached, and sure enough, I looked, and you had sent the B at, what, quarter till 11? Quarter till 1? Well, to 1 to me, yeah. And so, 
it was just that a message that normally should reach me didn't. Well, I think that happens a lot with emails. My email does that all the time. It sneaks in emails that should have been there at 2.07 a.m. when it was first sent. But when I first go through the list of my emails, it wasn't there. Yeah, and then yeah. it shows up at like 6 in the afternoon and says that it's been there waiting for you since 2 in the morning. Right. And did you check your spam folder? Yes, I actually do. I check my spam folder. <laughs> now, I'm convinced that what they've done now is set up the algorithm to cause stress in anybody using the internet to communicate. It's like with Discord now, every 20 minutes or so, it goes through a period for about five minutes where it clips off two seconds of the conversation every minute. Whoa. And it's like, okay, they were talking, and then you can't hear anything, and then it comes back in. And it says it's connection problems, but it happens too regularly to just be simple connection problems, and it happens to different people. Um, I can understand to get the drift that there's all kinds of energetic variations and con oh, not con collisions that go on that can do those kinds of things. That's why I don't use a bank. I don't use a debit card. I just use it as my identification when I go to the bank to get out cash. Because I don't trust them. The algorithms are not in our favor. No, and in fact, they do things from a position of power and then deny that they do them and just laugh their way to the bank. Because realistically, everything in the system is set up to take our money and give it to them. And so, if we're going to do a system reset, which seems obvious, how would we want to handle the Jubilee? Because there's the debt is debt to whom? Who, who is all this debt owed to? Right. And so, if the people who are debtors are given a Jubilee, how do we give every location rights to the land at its location so that the local community has the value of the property of the earth to begin coming back together with. Because if we're not going to be globalized, we've got to be localized. Uh, otherwise, we're in the muddle in the middle, and that's what the banksters have taken advantage. <laughs> Well, thinking that they're the ones who should hold favor over any of the transactions. That's why they didn't much like Bitcoin coming in, because it's a whole different setup of transactions. Actually, they're pushing it, and that it's just a transfer, and they're making it seem like they don't want it, while forcing it upon us, <coughs> because it gives them one more means of control. The cryptocurrencies are an intermediate, and they're not going to be the way we deal with real value. And dealing with real value is really what we've got to come up with, because right now, there is no dealing with real value. What's of value is what they set the monetary price at, and the monetary price isn't a reflection of value in the market. There's no hidden hand. There, it's all hidden. Hidden beings. Well, it could be like the lawyers and the judges and the judicial system that all the words you think mean one thing actually mean something completely opposite and different. Well, all those folks have to belong to the bar, the British Registry, and the British Registry is a foreign entity. So why are they involved in our courts in the first place? Oh, that's a great question. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, who gave him permission? At this point, rule of law can't exist because the people who are in charge of enforcing the rule of law aren't enforcing it. 
They're busy playing a game with maritime law, admiralty law, when we are common people and we have common law. But even below common law, there's such a thing as natural law, and we have been ignoring natural law in our treatment of the planet. Right. And so I'm convinced that the way to get through this is to make the planet a living person, give the planet all rights of every living person, and then renegotiate all the contracts so that we can't rape the planet for all its value and say oh we're humans we have domain over the whole planet when we're not taking care of it we're spraying chemtrails spilling oil in oceans putting sewage into rivers and all sorts of different things right yeah that's that's very valid well, do you believe that there's ways of remedying the issues that have been coming down? Yes. The first remedy is to not accept corporate culture. And if it requires nationalizing every corporation and then returning it to the local people, cut up the value, parse it into things so that every community that has a Walmart gets a portion of the Walmart empire to rebuild their downtown with. Because mm -hmm. Walmart certainly blew everybody's downtown by out-competing the merchants, by undercutting prices from an economy of scale, and now they've got a monopoly on cheap goods, except that maybe dollar stores are infringing on Walmarts now. But, I mean, really, what sort of quality do we get at Walmart or the dollar store? I get all my puzzles from Dollar Tree. But yeah, I see what you're saying. And it's true. They they are one step above the dollar stores, though. Literally. Family dollar and all that. And right. they're selling poison for food, just like Walmart. So, right. And in fact, they've got their role in the community because all the mom and pop stores that used to fill that niche are gone because they couldn't compete with the Walmart. Right, But dollar stores can because there's, what, three, four of them? Dollar General, Dollar... Family so, Dollar yeah, and Dollar Tree, yeah. They don't all stick to the dollar pricing, but basically it's schlock goods for cheap enough prices that if you're willing to compromise your quality for quantity, which you sometimes have to do, it's good stuff. Plus... If you actually go through the shelves and look at what they've got there, there's all sorts of different things that you'd think were expensive, on sale, dirt cheap. You can pick up audio headphones for a buck. And I don't care if they don't sound like Sennheisers. You didn't spend the $350 for the Sennheisers. You spent a buck. Right. Listen to music, and maybe it's a little distorted, but at least... That way you're not interrupting all the people around you by not having a headset. When it costs $20 a headset, I gave people a pass. When it costs a buck a headset, I'm not so likely to give people a pass. Mm. But you no, know, when you're telling you're going to give people a pass, you got to do it in all those places you give yourself a pass. And I think a lot of people think that they're above the law and that they should get a pass when other people don't. And we live in a pass-fail world where the default is fail. So instead of having a duality of pass and fail, maybe we have a trio of pass, pass, and fail so that it always takes two yeses to balance a no. And people who are deceitful with a no that can overcome a yes, need to convince two different yeses, and that's a lot harder to pull the wool over two people's eyes than one. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, that it's, makes sense. It's a matter of how we organize ourselves as groups, and the first group you have to organize yourself as is a group of one. And if you can't handle yourself as a group of one, you got some work to do. Hmm. And until you're comfortable with yourself as a group of one, you really shouldn't impose yourself on anybody else. Right. Sometimes we have to because that's the nature of the reality is we've got spouses and families and other people who can 
take our time when we need it. But, you know, it's always valid to say, hey, I'm not feeling well. Can you give me some time off and go back somewhere and catch control of yourself and find out what your problem is? Because usually when I have a problem with me, it comes out that I'm cranky to other people. So where do you go once you've got control of yourself? Well, according to Fibonacci, you jump from one to one. So the next place you go is to the other one, and that's the whole world of everything. And if you're not comfortable in the whole world of everything, well, now it's time to spend some time in the whole world of everything. And when you're done dealing with the whole world of everything, retreat back into yourself and your little shell of one so that you've got the one that's the whole big world and the one that's your little world. And those are your two limits. So you never can get outside of you being the individual that you are, and you're not going to get outside the big group of all everything that is one. But because we humans consider ourselves a group of one, maybe that's the place we should set our group in our getting hold of each other. Although, you know, if we recognize the living planet and we set that as the upper limit of the group of one, there's a lot of behaviors that humans do to the planet that are totally unacceptable from a human-to-human standpoint. Yeah, but it affects the whole planet. Like people who don't recognize that the vibrations that we put out there are creating the future. And also the present, because, you know, it just depends. If you're an a-hole, then a-hole things are going to come and affect you, because you're calling it to yourself. And we have done this to the planet. Go ahead. If you are going to make one change to the planet operations to help things get better, what would you do? Love. Share, spread, teach, know that unconditional love is the main law. And once love takes hold over fear and victimhood, miracles will occur. I think you're right in that aspect. And love is a human scale thing, right? Well, I think my babies love me. You know, the animal, I got to sit in your lap because I love you. You know, the kitties and things like that. So, yeah. (laughs) How about corporate scale? Does corporate scale have a love concept? Only by the commercialized that they can pretend that this is love and takes you away from the truth of what love is. Yeah, and so I think that if humans can get to the point where every concept has to be run through a human filter before it can be approved, and if you walk on the rights of any existing human for any reason... You can't justify what you're doing. That would take a lot of what goes on and is acceptable at corporate scale because the corporation and the government, neither of which are anywhere close to human scale, have cut a deal to have allowances of pollution. I mean, that sort of stuff has to be right out. And we have to form a form of governance that is more representative of the people. So I actually read an article on Friday that proposed that instead of electing government, what you do is you give people two two year terms in a position selected totally at random. And so all of a sudden you get a knock on the door and, hey, guess what? You are now the Secretary of State. You've got a two year term. Get your ass to Washington and go do it. And it's like, what the hell just happened to me? But that person goes off and they be the Secretary of State and they play the role as honestly as they can. Could that be any worse than Hillary Clinton having being the Secretary of State for four years under Obama? I have no qualms with any of it. In fact, I think when everybody votes, we all should write in our own name and take our country back. But that's just me. Quit voting for a-holes who just are doing it for the corporations and the money and the power and the prestige. (laughs) I'd sooner elect a grand pooba because (laughs) the grand pooba ran the lodge in the Flintstone era and everybody was a lodge member and they all catered to the power of the grand pooba. 
That's so, the Masons, though. That's supposedly the Illuminati who has created the whole illusion. Really? The Masons? Yeah. yeah. I never put them together in the Flintstones. I'm telling you, I remember the Flintstones, and yes, I get what you're saying. It makes, it makes perfect sense. You see, what I like to do is I like to take my reality into the world of cartoon physics. Okay. And cartoon physics is whether you walk over off the cliff with the Roadrunner, but the Jetsons and the Flintstones definitely have a lot of cartoon physics, and this fits right in with cartoon physics, because if the Masons are the Lodge and the Lodge controls everything, then those evil folks who have to tell us everything but put it in disguises sold it to a whole generation our age as a docile TV show for children. Yep. It's a beautiful day in our neighbor. A beautiful oh, day that's in funny. our He was so. good. I love his show, even as an adult. But the whole situation is, is what came to mind was, hey, I'm Mr. Ed. <laughs> a horse is a horse, of course. A horse, a horse. A horse yes. uh, at our age, we can rattle off what came from the 60s without even thinking of it. And it was a whole world of brainwashing. I mean, how about this one? Taste me, taste me, come on and taste me. Take a puff and let me do my stuff. Oh, no. All cigarettes. Okay, because I thought it was a um, um, some kind of yogurt or something. Just, I guess, each one of us chose our own... Because what came into my mind was Green Giant. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh. Green Giant. Jolly. Ho, ho, ho. Green Giant. And it's so funny. I don't remember many of the cigarettes except the Marlboro Man commercial. And I smoke. I remember cigarette commercials. I remember I remember the Alka Seltzer commercials. Oh, blah blah fizz fizz. Oh what a relief it is. Yes. Or Mamma Mia, that's a specie mite book. Mamma Mia, that's a spicy meatball. Oh, but that was Digel or something else. It wasn't, I don't think it could have been Pepto Bismol or something. Here, drink this pink synthetic crap. It'll cure you, right? Shish. And it smells of wintergreen. Or bubble gum. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. I remember collecting baseball cards and always getting a stale stick of bubble gum in every pack. Right. They Bazooka. sure want to go to the dentists. Oh, uh, that was probably it, too. Yeah. All that metal in our teeth. And now we're controlled by the metal in our teeth. So that when they tweak the wavelengths, you go, ah, you get a toothache. Interesting. I think, I think that if we set, if we could take all the music that set at 440 and set it back at 432, I think we'd have a lot more harmony. But by taking music and setting it to a beat that's not in rhythm, with the normal sense of natural law, they've really made it so that everybody starts off uncomfortable. Mm hmm. Yeah, just with the electronics everywhere, it creates a conclusion of uncomfortable. I can't even, I don't even want to go into a lot of stores or offices because of all the lighting and the power and the good thing I'm shunguided because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at my container with my shungite in it and thinking it needs to be better distributed, but I'm afraid that in a place where there's rocks all over the place, the shungite would not be valued. It would just be another rock, and so I'd rather keep it in my thermos where I know where it is than distribute it and just have it sit there amongst rocks. Well, are you using well water? Um, no, we're oh. using stilled water that's bottled and purchased, but I run it through my uh, water spinner, and when I put it in my thermos, I've got like 12, rocks, 
12 shungite rocks in the thermos because that's what I took them in to be able to distribute them. Right, because all you need is three. Right. So I figure I have four sets, one of which is mine that I'll keep. But these were the shungite that I had in the gallons of water when I was distilling back in Oregon. I couldn't take my distillation apparatus with me on the road. Right. So you make do with what you have, but you figure out how you can do better. And anytime you have an opportunity to do something incrementally better, you shift off and you start doing it better. But you don't get too distressed about what you have to deal with because that's the way cards work. Whatever hand you're dealt is the hand you get. Hmm. Well, I can't deny that at all. But I figure that the world is changing leaps and bounds and that by the end of the time when we actually elect somebody next year, if we get there, marijuana will have been federally legalized. Well, that would be great. My prediction is that's going to be one of those things that comes into play as a talking point from one of the conglomerates of Democrats that happen to be running. And as soon as it becomes a talking point, Trump will just say, okay, Tell the Health Human Services guy to announce that marijuana is now no longer listed federally on Schedule 3, which is, like, not a place where it ought to be anyway. Right. Why do humans have an endocannabinoid system if they're not supposed to be smoking all the time? It's just a way to adjust. It's not even a drug. I Once know. Again, point it doesn't really affect how you think except that when you're not using it you tend to be a bit more choppity and nervous so that the marijuana sort of dampens your wavelength so instead of being at a sharp point you've got a broad spectrum Mm -hmm. well and plus it's green which is very chlorophyll and that's what we need also to exist in this life is the green it helps deter any of the harmful cancer cells and things like that maybe the way we deal with things in agriculture can be improved to get more nutrition back into the food i was thinking the problems we have with big agriculture and it all stems from mineral depletion because now we're supposed to take our minerals in pill form as a supplement rather than getting them from our food yeah I guess that's what GMOs is all about I think GMOs is about eugenics but that's not something you're usually allowed to talk about But, you know, this is Bridget's show, and you and I don't have ownership of it, so we can talk about eugenics if we want. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the government actively trying to kill the population. Oh, yeah. Georgia's Guidestones. Yeah. It's one of those things where we have reached the point where it has become obvious to me as a scientist that the game is exterminate life on the planet. And that we live in a death culture, and the death culture is in the throes of death, which is just the best place for the death culture to be, because the life culture can come to bear once again when the death culture is out of the way, because it has collapsed on itself. But we have to be ready to take what we have from that collapse and use that as the beginning of doing something better. And so now is the time where we can get all the prep work done, where we can learn things that we've always wanted to know because in the future we might not have access to books. And so if we have access to books, then the way to deal with it is to get that knowledge in your head now while you do have access to books. Right. No internet, no nothing. I mean, they could come down to where we're completely shut off from everything. What I find interesting is that when you look things up in the internet and then you look things up in the books, 
the books give you a little different perspective than the internet does. And it used to be that you knew you were going to get different material in the books than you did on the internet. But somehow they've managed to rewrite the books so that books that said one thing now say something else. <laughs> right. So that the stuff that I remember being taught when I go back to the book that I learned it from says something different. And it's like, wait a minute, how do I deal with this concept? Oh, that's a good question. Because there has been no way that we've been taught or shown how to release, resolve, relinquish anything that does not fit in our constitution of our living human being. And that's why I think a lot of people actually also lash out because they aren't comfortable with finding a change because they're so stuck in the way they've been programmed that it's supposed to be. I had to have a nervous breakdown breakthrough just to get rid of what I thought I had to behave like and believe in and actually be just so I could let myself show what my purpose of being is in the human scale. Yeah, and so the things that we need to think to take care of on human scale are all the things that we've given up our power to some corporation to do on massive beyond human scale. Things like growing food or making sure the water is good or giving first aid. Right. I mean, Nowadays, if you're a passerby and somebody gets hurt and you give first aid, you're liable to lawsuit. Really? In, in some places, yes. Oh, whoa. And there are laws that are called Samaritan laws. Right. That legally tell you not to be a good Samaritan. And a lot of times people do get in the way, well-meaning, but not really all there on what's going on. Exactly. And so there's, it's really one of those things where, once again, we got to get back to a group of one and get a group grip on ourselves, and then figure out what scale we want to do our work in the world on. And if you're like you, I'd say your choice would be what I call Mother Teresa scale. No. Which means anyone and everybody. <laughs> scale, I'm not there. I don't deal well with people who don't have the resources to think quick on their feet. But I have to learn how to do that because everybody doesn't have the resources to think quick. People have different attributes that are their skill set, and that the skill set that you have is very, very much dependent on what you're interested in. So that takes you back to that skill of one single human being to ask yourself, am I really interested in the stuff that I'm doing? And if I'm not, why am I doing it? That's fair. No, I am no Mother Teresa, trust me. Mm -mm. I didn't say you were Mother Teresa. I said you're working on that sort of a scale where anybody who comes in contact with you has access to you because you've put yourself out there as a talk show host and people know how to contact you and spill on your ear if they wish to do that. Nope. It's kind of interesting. I were, I've been at the hermit scale for so long that I sometimes forget how to do social behaviors. And so getting back on radio and doing radio with a composite cast of characters instead of just me individually has me learning a lot. And then living with a family that actually has children and adults both in the same house is something that I haven't done for a good 15 years. Right. And I've learned that the way children see 
the world and the way adults see children seeing the world are two vastly different ways of looking at the world. Yes. And it's still all by programming, though. But it's you very, can't okay. choose sides. Well, you know, part of our programming is so well embedded that we don't even see it as programming. Right. And part of it's that the programming has changed during each generation so that the programs have been written for the generations to battle each other. Mm -hmm. And that, that has been set off very deliberately. And really, the obnoxious behavior of people who call them adult, themselves adults, in dealing with hormonal children is what breaks up a lot of families because the hormones that the children are going through need to have something to do to get there. And the adults all live in their own world and don't give their children enough attention or give their children way too much attention. And there's no middle ground where a child can have peace. It's either have a helicopter parent or get totally ignored. And those are not good options for children. Not normally. It seems to me that the whole education system coming from human scale has to be redesigned to the mind of a child. Well, if adults would recognize that they still have the heart of the child, things would be a whole lot easier on everybody. I've allowed my inner child to have equal status to my higher self and become a group of five along with me, myself, and I. Cool. And so I'm not schizophrenic. I just have compartmentalized myself enough to know which of those five should be the dominant persona in a certain situation and act accordingly. And so when I'm I and I'm operating under the status of my PhD in chemistry, I have different credibility limits than when I'm me playing the role of a talk show host that is a scientist who is against scientism. Right. <laughs> That's a role that I play on the radio. And I think a lot of people in real life who get to know me realize it's a role. But a lot of the listeners who listen to the show regularly and some of the participants don't realize that it's a big act. Okay. It's a role play. And so I'll say things that are ridiculous and try and push them as a scientist to see how many people will believe me and then do a reveal that tells them how ridiculous I'm getting with it until somebody calls me on it. And then I remind everybody that it's a crypto fiction and we're allowed to do that. And everybody laughs, but it once again gets them recognizing that the people who are out there who call themselves experts, well, X means former, and we all know what a spurt is, right? Yeah, right when you have forgotten to shake the ketchup or the um, mustard before the vinegar comes out. Yep. So when you <laughs> Your first shot, all oh, the leaking, and what do you do? But, you know, that's the way it works. And I bet that 90% of American households have mostly empty bottles of ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise in their refrigerator. I had to throw one away because the plastic was so fragile it broke. I had ketchup running everywhere. It was like, oh, my gosh. It was like a brand new container open to, not that I use a lot of it, but. It's a built-in obsolescence trick that they want us to buy more in larger containers that are more fragile. And the, the biggest chick trick of all are those sacks of chips that as soon as you open the sack, the entire sack explodes on you. 
And it's like, oh, I see what they're doing. They want me to go buy more chips. So they'll destroy the packaging so that pretty much if you buy a bag of chips with all the things they put on the chips now, you get embedded into the salt addiction and you pretty much finish the package no matter what size it is. Right. Well, that sure doesn't mean that people have been disciplining themselves, does it? That's the person who should be disciplining us is ourselves, but we also should be forgiving ourselves for transgressions and trying to lead a happier frame of life. Hey, what time do the uh, mid show... Top of the hour, honey. I'm yeah, listening I... to the station now, waiting to see when it comes on. I don't yeah. remember the Saturday. I only remember my days. Plus, it's a different studio, so... Yeah, I think it's supposed to come on at 56. Well, but it's 56 it, now. But. That's what I was about to say, is that before we get anything more substantial, we should probably idle till the top of the hour. Right. And I'm pretty sure that the top of the hour is 12.01. Well, usually by you, because it'll be... Two o'clock by me, but here came the music. All right, we'll be right back. Good-looking people out there in Revolution Radio, this is Mario. I invite you to join me Thursdays at 6 o'clock for this, that, and the other. It's a show about you, it's a show about me, but ultimately it's a show where we try to have a little bit of fun. We discuss important topics and we do our best to be apolitical. So I invite you, put on your favorite pair of comfy sweats, your smoking jacket, and grab a beverage of your choice, and join me Thursday evenings at 6 o'clock for this that in the other on Revolution Radio. Enter into a world unseen on Raven Star's Witching Hour. You will encounter eclectic topics from the realm of spirit brought into our matrix of truth. With your host, the Solaris Blue Raven. Solaris will bring you an array of unique guests covering topics from ghostly spirits to amazing anomalies, covert technology, UFOs, and shadowy global events. And that's right here at Revolution Radio FreedomSlips.com, Saturdays, midnight till 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Let the magic rise. <laughs> From the astral realms to the physical plane, the halls of power to the walls of home, the multiverse to the innerverse, all will be haunted by the ghost in the machine. I am Steve Zeraloff, the ghost in the machine, Mondays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Studio B, exclusively here on revolution.radio Extendivite really works. Just listen to what some people have to say. Several years ago, I was developing a very uh, severe situation. I called it my flippy heart. It was just was doing not good things. And I did not want to go to a medical doctor because uh, I just knew they would give me a cover-up pill. I didn't want to get onto that sort of thing at all. When I learned it was garlic and cayenne, and cayenne is a healer. It is a wonderful herb. I said, I think I'm onto something here. 
I'll tell you, I wouldn't be without it. It did wonderful things for me. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Call now. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host... Alrighty then, we are back. <clears throat> Digging holes, carrying stones, covering for Miss Bridget today as she's at her herbal conferences. And um, we are listener support here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. So please don't hesitate. We have archives <clears throat> and seed packs and all kinds of stuff at the homepage on the swap screen. Please don't forget us because we love our station. All right. So what kind of conversation will we be discussing? <laughs> We're just discussing simple things like changing the world. Right. And it reminds, to. Me, reminds me of a good late friend of ours, Matt Stein. And Matt wrote a book called When Technology Fails that ought to be on everybody's shelf because no matter what happens, the one thing we can guarantee is that everything eventually fails. It's too much to keep things going in a linear trajectory before something goes wrong and things start going haywire. So the idea that failure is bad isn't really a good idea at all, that we have to embrace the fact that we fail at things before we succeed, and even after we succeed, we'll sometimes fail again, and that as people, what we need to do is not be as attached to the outcome as doing it correctly in the first place. Yeah, right. If you're doing things correctly how you think are correct and it continually doesn't work, I think that's a good hint that maybe you're not quite correct in your thinking. Or they don't know if you're dealing with others to have correct thinking either. So some situations are not where you have to consider yourself wrong. It's just that they can't compulate or comprehend what is being actually put out there. And I think that for all that we can comprehend, sometimes we totally miss the point too, and that people are people and have their own way of thinking uniquely that has been edumacated into common thinking, hmm. which doesn't serve any individual to think commonly. And so each of us should be thinking for ourselves. And when we start doing that, we start seeing more parallels in things that we weren't told were related to each other. Right. And so one of the biggest things I found by learning, by spending time out in nature, is that if there's not one way of doing something, then there's another way of doing it. And that things that I had done routinely and always could count on for some reason couldn't be counted on had to come up with something else on the fly. And it's like, you know, you had a book of matches and you go for them and <laughs> there's a puddle in, in, in the book of matches. And so it's not a matter of being able to not do without the fire. You just got to come up with something. And whoever invented the BIC and mass-produced it did something very, very good. So if everybody had half a dozen BIC lighters on hand in an emergency situation, 
that would be something of great value. And so, what do they sell them for? Six for five dollars? Oh, no, I think they're probably six for eight. Anyway, depending on where you can get them, they're still a very good deal. And if everything broke down, I would guarantee you could always trade a lighter for something you needed. Well, that's why I buy matches. Matches work also. And a lot of people won't use lighters because they're high-tech things. But oh. it, it makes sense to me to be ready for any possibility. And the more you think you know what's coming up, the less likely it is to come up. <laughs> so don't, don't fool yourself by overthinking too many things. The trick is to just be aware that if something breaks, when it breaks, you can address what the cause was. And if you get the cause right, you're likely to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. But we've got so many problems now that aren't even addressed because the people who have responsibility in reality are busy doing political stuff and don't have an attachment to the real world. And so we're in a place where everybody's world is a different world, and the world that we've grown up in and have gotten used to is going to change in the next five years. But whether it's the introduction of going out into space, or it's a world war that causes an Armageddon, or if it's a revealing of a future of peace on a living earth, that has yet to be determined. And the narrative that is in play now is so unbelievable that they can't pull it off anymore. And those of us who have an inkling that there's something else going on need to be explained what it is that's the big reveal because some people know what's going on and try to take advantage of it. Some people try and do good no matter what they're up to. And somehow the do-gooders are taking advantage and that never makes sense. That's not the way they write the scripts. So I think we need to step back and start creating our own narratives. Yes, and that's by not basically digging into others' narratives. Yeah. Finding a group of people that you're happy working with and rolling up your sleeves and getting to work in exclusion of what's going on in the outside world just so that you're at a place where if things do fall apart, you know what your next two moves are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be anything major, but one of the scenarios I have is that if they pull the electricity, the gas pumps don't run. Right. And so or water. Tank of gas. So what are you going to do with your one tank of gas that will get you to wherever you need to go as long as you can conserve that gas? Right. It's just a mental gymnastic that people can play with themselves just to learn and think it through. And that way it's never going to happen because you've already thought about it and you've got your situation. But everybody gets to deal with situations they've never experienced before because that's what experience is all about. Mm -hmm. And as you get to see our age, close to 60 or so, you've realized that, you know, there's not that many new experiences left that aren't like other experiences that you've already had. And there's some experiences that you've had that were so wild that you know you're never going to go there again. But there's also a few things that when you get to our age or on the bucket list of things that you wanted to do before your life ended, that if something happened tomorrow, you won't get to do. So that's what people ought to plan on doing, is fulfilling their bucket list 
within a short period of time, and that'll distract them from the big picture that's made up by the media and Hollywood anyway. Right. I don't see why not. I just don't have a bucket list. Okay. That means you've done everything you figured you wanted to do. <clears throat> There's one thing high on my bucket list that I haven't gotten to do yet that I'd be disappointed with myself if I don't get to do. I've always wanted to live in a castle. I wouldn't mind visiting them, but I think to live in one would be too economically challenging i mean I, oh yeah there's hopes i want to do but it doesn't mean i want to go anywhere i'd right. love to get enough together to have a house to bring all my girls home and be with me yeah and so if you can envision that as a plausible reality it has more of a chance to manifest than if you only give it a fleeting thought but Somebody once demonstrated to me that if I made a picture of what it was that I wanted and I then went ahead and went on with things, when I came back to that picture later on, I'd have what was drawn in that picture of what I wanted. And so it's an interesting game to think that that might happen. And I drew a picture and I forgot about it. And so when I find that picture in one of my notebooks somewhere buried in a stack, um, I'll know that whatever was in that picture that I drew, which I don't remember what I drew, will have manifested itself. Mm. Why not? Yeah. It's that we have to believe in different possibilities than what we we're led to for the reality given to us to exist because that reality is every bit of fabrication as the holodeck on Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah, but then again, the holodeck is a reality, so even though it might seem that you're playing an illusion, there is still fact behind the materialism of it all to manifest anything that is of that creation right wrong maybe mm. yes i think it's one of those double-edged swords that if you're going to manifest things you better be aware of what you're manifesting yeah, because that too. manifest improperly you don't get what you want you get what you ask for exactly <laughs> And so it's very important to have what you want worked out so that you can always take the best of every situation. And it's all a learning experience, and we've got to learn from our own experiences because most of us only know behavior based on what television taught us, and that's not acceptable behavior any longer. And we've got to act in the role of being grown-ups now. We can no longer pretend that just because they told us something in school that it's true. Mm -hmm. But we know most of what they told us in school is hardly even close to true. Yeah, isn't that the sad thing to deal with? In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. I'm no longer attached to the outcome. I just do the best I can with the cards I'm dealt. All right. That's really the only thing we really could do. Yep. What was the song Paradise by the Dashboard Light by Meatloaf? You got to mm -hmm. do what you can and let Mother Nature do the rest. Interesting. No doubt about it, because we were barely 17 and we were barely dressed. Huh. Well, that's <laughs> probably true. Go all the way tonight, tonight. <laughs> Great song, Me Love Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Uh, mm. Oh, wow. We did cars, planes, trains, and automobile songs yesterday on our show. And I could have played Paradise by the Dashboard Light because the Dashboard Light is in a car, right? 
So it's a call song. I missed an opportunity. Oh. But that's okay. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of good songs about conveyances. We got to leave on a jet plane with Peter, Paul, and Mary. And we got into a fast car with Tracy Chapman. And a lot of good music. And the more people that come on Fridays to play the music game, the more diversity of music that we're turned on to. And so the music games on Fridays usually work out pretty good. Then we sometimes play the Wheel of Infinite Realities. And that's where our host... uh, Our host spins a wheel, and it makes the sound effects, and then we get asked questions, and the contestants have to answer the questions. So, like, it it was a pretty good game. We have fun. We invent games. We do the games on the radio, and that's how we play. So, for any interested listener... We're on Steampunk Radio at 10 in the morning Eastern Time every weekday. That's Steampunk, S-T-E-E-M-P-U-N-K. And uh, you can find it on the TuneIn app. And uh, we do all sorts of crazy weird shit on radio. But one of the things that we try and do is we try and stay away from reality topics, at least during the current run. I'm going to get back to the point where I bring on guests for interviews and we do get some serious stuff. But making fun of reality is so much more fun than actually participating in it. So that's my pitch. Now that everybody knows that I just want to play games all the time, there is something to the reality that's going on that isn't making sense. And I'm trying to piece it together, and I, I get the feeling that the built-in obsolescence was made to pump the economy. But still, if in past times things were made really to stand up for long lengths of time, where are they? Because right now you can't get really good goods. You only get cheap plastic imitations or paperboard wood or things like that. Right. I'm starting to think that not only is there not value in the system, but the things that the system was originally put together for that showed the value of the population have diminished to where the population isn't capable of things that have long lasting value anymore. And heck, most of the population can't even grow its own food. Yeah, well, the environment is changing. I've seen a plant overnight look well, and the next day it completely looks like something beat it up chemically. In fact, I've had three plants do that, but not all on the same day, and the other plants are not um, affected. So the environment is really adulterating all kinds of Things that should be growing that just aren't growing. South Carolina had a um, issue with their watermelons where they're not even producing correctly. They actually look more like gourds and that their seeds are not maturing to a reproductive design because they're not being well pollinated. I didn't realize it took like 300 little taps on that stanum to flip and get where the fruit actually gets pollinated. It has to have that many on one flower jabs to get pollinated to create a fulfilling seed bearing fruit. Now that's scary. So there's going to be a lot of food hikes and other things like that because We cannot do what we once thought nature intended us to utilize itself to do. Yeah, there's also the mineral depletion of farmland and topsoil. And that this year, specifically in the Midwest, 
so much of the topsoil that had years of nutrition in it got distributed further downstream. And so what that means, I'm not quite sure because the environment has to redistribute its assets. And most rivers that used to have large floodplains now don't have those floodplains available and cause damage in communities and cities. And so I understand that the Rust Belt this year is going to have its lowest yield in a long time and that they haven't really let the people know that we're going to have food, real, real difficulty with food. So food prices are going to go way up and food quality is going to go down. Right. And so learning how to grow your own food is one of those things that anybody listening to us now can be prepared to grow food by the spring. And so it's really worthwhile to go get some knowledge. Listening to Bridget on this show is one of those ways to get knowledge. And she knows a lot about soil. She's learning about native plants and stuff now. And her ideas are things worth listening to because they're new approaches to doing things that otherwise would have been taken care of by people we don't know doing processes that we're not familiar with. And that's what the world has gotten to, and that's what's got to change, is that locally we have to have the ability to do anything that we need to do. It's not aggregable. I wish it sincerely was as aggregable as it once was. Seriously. I'm seeing things change to where all I can do is shake my head and go, okay, this is where it seems to be heading. And I try to change it to the best of my ability by my knowledge of how it once was. And it's just not acclimating itself. But August is the one of the hottest months and they want to say that we don't have chemtrails anymore. Well, yes, we do. And I'm seeing things that I just would rather not even incorporate into the idea of... Uh, there's going to be a lot of loss. There just really is. And we have to be able to deal with loss and not become a victim of it. It's... It is. It's, I guess yeah. it's a, a measure of value, and it depends on what we value. And as more and more people lose their homes to the economic system that creates winners and losers, at some point we need to say enough of that and have the jubilee and redistribute all the wealth of the winners back to everybody and start in some equivalent basis. Well, so, supposedly what I heard is that um, Canada has literally dropped everybody's debt. So that is one step towards whatever it is that they're thinking about. To me, that seems like a small portion of a jubilee. But wait, wait. How does Canada get to relieve people of debt to anything other than the province, the, the country of Canada. Well, that's just Canada. They're take the, supposedly they've taken the steps to. What? Canada's not owed money by the people, except for those who welched out on their taxes. And that's not what they're talking about. Or at least that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a, a total jubilee for everybody where all debt is wiped out and we redistribute property ownership. Well, that was supposed to happen during all the blue moons a time ago, and it didn't happen, to my knowledge. I don't believe it has happened either, 
But what's a blue moon? That's when the full moon is. Well, out. they were the red moons. They, it was the red moons. There was a certain eclipse cycle that was happening, like in the 16th and 17th. I, I could probably Google it. <laughs> and um, that the red moons, where it was supposed to turn into a jubilee, that everybody got a clear slate, clean slate. Let's see. Oh, well, we it should make our jubilee then. Mm. I mean, really, if if everybody has a clean slate, let's redistribute the property now and let's go to it. But as long as people owe debts and and the government is super in debt and all this debt, 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 and it's all owned to the banksters, there's an easy way. We have the new way guillotine for banksters. <laughs> Grab every bankster there is, and when we have enough heads rolling, we should have a new system, right? Right. But the question is, why we believe in the economic system in the first place? Isn't it time we've given up on it? We need to do better than economics. We really do. Well, I don't know how for what. Okay, it was 2016. All right. Not that it happened or did anything, but they keep putting religion in it. And I guess maybe because the Pope's the one who's the biggest owner of all the banks, really, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, well. All right, Dirt. We get your meaning, but you know, hey. Um, uh, how can I say that? Yes, a blue moon, but. A true month only has 28 days. The months that we get, you can't put two moons into a 28 period if the moon cycles 28 days. Right. So a month is not, and when they say blue moon, that's just a conniving fact of non-existence. It really is. Yep. And so the entire structure that they give us Reminds me of this game we used to play with children where we told them that the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus were real. And then when they got to be teenage, we suddenly told them, nope, that's not real. We've been lying to you. And we expect them to believe anything else we might say. Oh, well, yeah. That was another oh. thing that had to change my life is I couldn't lie to my children. I didn't want to be lied to, so I wouldn't want to lie to them. And I did the best to my ability. It's All you can do is all you can do. And to the best of your ability is all you can do. So I, I pat yourself on the back, not condemn yourself for any reason. <laughs> and that's the truth well exactly because I'm not taking my life personal and somebody else does that's their problem not mine and I only do the best that I can do and I expect that of everybody but not when it's intended to do harm then I know that okay <laughs> you just sure you just didn't make any brownie points with me. The penalties for doing harm nowadays are rewards. And so people are encouraged to do harm to each other. And that's just really not right. Yeah, they were talking about, um, uh, what was it? Um, one of these new... Al Jazeera, or oh gosh, one of these new um, groups that's out to hurt people. Uh, Antifa riots in Portland, Oregon. Oh, really? Yeah. No, oh, you don't have it's, that. I'll send I, you the link for the video. Okay, because you see, I haven't paid any attention to what's going on home since I left because taking a break from home was well the only thing i'm really interested in is if there are forest fires 
because I have stuff there that I might want to get away from a forest fire if it's real close. Right. But that, I'm okay with however it turns out to be. And so, I have avoided looking at news from Oregon, but this sounds interesting. If they are having riots in Portland, have you ever seen this show, Portlandia? No. Portlandia is a show where some ex-Saturday Night Live folk branched out, and it just shows how ridiculous extreme the liberalism ha- can get. And it's, I, I've never watched the show, but I actually like the character that plays the guy in the show from Saturday Night Live days. So once I'm stranded in a place with unlimited options, that's a show that I'll go back and watch and binge watch. But it would be interesting to see what's going on in Portland and compare it to Portlandia. And uh, see how it goes. I think it's a current show running on one of the cable networks. Interesting. I don't watch television at all. I so don't either. It's advantage of knowing what's going on in pop culture. But it's one of those things that since I've been on the road, I've let go of most of the YouTube channels I used to watch that keep me informed with the nonsense. And so now anytime I get flashes of the nonsense, it no longer makes sense. Okay. And I guess what nonsense is about is that it's not supposed to make sense. And so I see it all as they lied to us when they gave us get smart. When we were told that control battled chaos, and uh, in reality, chaos was the good guys and control was the bad guys, and they just slipped that one right past everybody, and now 50 years later, because that was in the 1960s, I think, that they did get smart, all the participants from the original are out of mind, long gone. And the culture misinterprets backwards or doesn't even interpret the analogy. So it's kind of fun to sit on YouTube and watch some of these old shows. And we, they got away with a lot of stuff that would never get away with today. I was watching some old TV game shows looking for ideas for the radio show. And I tell you, on some of these shows, the... Host and the guests are totally trashed. And they're getting on television totally trashed out and they're just making fun of each other. Well, that seems to be fair these days. I guess it was part of Saturday Night Live that did that too. I think it's always part of the culture to be able to do that, but now... Everything is so politically correct that if you even try to do that, there's people jumping on your case. <laughs> well, that's probable. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I'm happy to be able to use the radio to talk as a uh, person to the radio audience because a lot doesn't get said and what gets said and presented for mass consumption. But for those of us who are watching what's going on and shaking our heads, uh, it's one of those things where if we wait long enough, I do believe the biblical passage said that the meek shall inherit the earth. What What's going on can't be stopped, but it certainly can be gotten out of the way. So I'm not going to be like a Chinese guy in Tiananmen Square. I'm not going to lay underneath a tank. Right. I'll not be in that square, thank you. I don't blame you. Why put yourself out there? But then again, we're putting ourselves out there just being here right now. And that's okay to my idea, anyway. Because it's it's 
And you're live on Revolution Radio. This is Dr. Lenny Time. I'm talking with Mona Radler, who is the feral hippie. And you're listening to Carrying Stones and Digging Holes. I do believe that Mona is intending to return to the call. And I've never seen a Skype call that's actually dropped the host and still maintain the call so i am definitely here out on my own because i have the station but i do not seem to have anything else going on on the call so have a happy 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 holiday no wait We can talk about things like better living through not-so-modern chemistry, because if everything breaks down, we're going to need to make things like soap. Soap's really not that hard to make, and if you know what sort of plants make soap, you can make soap out of your plants pretty well. Or you can use hydroxide and make lye soap, and you can get lye at a whole bunch of different places. But if you're making your own soaps, there's protocols to follow. And that's where you might get my buddy Matt Stein's book. Matthew Stein wrote a book called When Technology Fails. And uh, he's no longer with us, so there's not going to be a republishing of the thing. So it was written in 2000 and then revised in 2008. So there is a second publishing. And I've got the second publishing autographed copy so i'm doing really well and uh things are good um i'm wondering where our host happens to be and whether or not we might actually get her back into the show because you know after all this is her trying to be covering bridget's show and so I don't know. Maybe somebody from the station can cue me in by playing something that I can hear. And I'll know if they're, if I'm just talking in the air or keeping it so that we are alive on radio. Because sometimes you never know. And as a talk show host, I feel obligated to keep on air. But if I'm not on air, I certainly would appreciate not having to talk continually. So if we understand technology as technology runs, then the idea is that technology is bound to fail. And when technology fails, all we can do is pick up the pieces And uh, once we pick up the pieces, then we can do things. And that's what life's about, picking up the pieces from whatever happens and continuing on with life. I just got to another Skype page, so I'm going to see what's going on in Mona World. And maybe we'll get her back here to continue on with what we're doing on the station. Because after all, I feel sort of in that place where things work out as they work out. Okay, I now have my cue. I am here. Oh, yay. What went on there? Um... (laughs) I cannot fathom to tell you. Okay. I didn't do very good tiding over because I was confused as to what was going on. And so I kept talking, but the talking was incoherent. Oh, I could hear it. It was there. Whoops. Now why am I shut off? Oh, wait a minute here. There it goes. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, I don't know, something came in and zapped me out. So, it's all, all good. The are in normal, nobody's in retrograde, right? Oh, no, Uranus is in a retrograde, I think Neptune is. I don't know. I know Capricorn, so 
Cancer, I mean, um, Saturn and Pluto have been retrograde. So I just re flip the on off slip ship the button to the whole system and got back on. That's all. That's all you have to do. Do you listen to Crow Triple Seven at all? Huh? Crow Triple Seven is an internet radio group. No. And they were talking about the myths behind the names of the planets and how they related to the Greek and Roman mm-hmm. mythology. And it, it's getting to the point where things are getting really bizarre and the history seems to be changing. Oh, I don't doubt that. They're trying to keep it um, quiet, you know. Yeah. They don't want the real history out. Well, I've been doing more work in Tartary. is coming up more and more. And I have a friend who is... Reading the 1813 printing of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Mm. And the monster ended up going off to Tartary. So, if there was ever a question that it was real history, the reference in the original version of Frankenstein should put all that to rest. Or is that just another Mandela effect, too? I don't know. Some of it could be 5G. Uh, How would 5G change history? How would 5G? It's, it's, by telling people it's safe and all the rest of that, and people go for it, that'll change history. Or are we going to literally wake up to the reality that it's a death thing? Uh, how could yeah, that change reality? Exactly. I wonder what's going to happen when 5G starts meeting the fillings in people's teeth and everybody's teeth start ringing. Well, it's already been told that that's happening. Just with the metals that we have in our body, let alone the, um, I mean, the 5G's microwave. What does that do to, to the water molecules and what are humans made out of? All kinds of maladjustments here are going to happen. They're going on already with the soil and things. Yeah, people did the experiment of microwaving water before feeding it to plants and demonstrated how using just microwaved water will kill your plants. Right. So So there's this sort of intelligence in the structure of water that the microwave reconfigures. It's almost like the microwave is a reset and the water is a chip so that you always started your chip at all zeros. Hmm. So you zap the water, you then do some water structuring with shungite and that, and you probably got fairly intelligent water there. Although I don't think we need microwaves at all. I'd get rid of them totally. Exactly. I don't do it. I mean, there's one in the house that people use, but uh, I don't use it. I stay out of the room. I made that suggestion that if you're going to turn on the microwave, tell me so I don't have to be around for it. Yeah, I don't really want to use a microwave oven ever. Except to take apart and re reuse materials that are within the oven. But I haven't done that since my old chemistry days. I'm not very good with screwdrivers and wrenches. I'd much rather play with glass and tubing. So what you got coming next week for show guests? You have anybody coming on the show? Not to my knowledge. Well, seeing nope. how things go, maybe I'll coordinate with you for a day later in the week. Yeah, drum up some information that we all need to hear. Not to say that the information we don't provide, they need to hear, but you know what I mean. Now you do some uh, studies around the house and let us know how that happens. Have you tried growing anything while you're there? No, this is desert, and uh, everywhere here is, it, it, 
the places where they grow crops in the field, they're growing crops in the field. There, nobody locally has gardens or that, and it's all the dairy uh, personnel and their families, and so not conducive to anything but going to work and coming home. But I have my own work inside my head and on paper and through the internet, so my physical location doesn't affect the quality of my work. Right. So I can do in whatever situation I'm in, but I'm not in the place in Oregon where growing food matters this year. Mm. And once we decided to put the five acres of hemp in in Oregon and bring people in to grow the hemp, my responsibility of making sure there weren't people, there was always somebody on the, the land at any given time, was relieved for the duration of the length of growing the crop. So I felt that it was a good time to go and take a vacation this summer. Mm-hmm. So by being, I'm not putting terribly much thought into what's going on there. And Portland isn't really home, so I feel I can go and look at what you sent me. Part, oh, right. It's still, it's something that they're trying to put out fear and make people feel like victims. And it's a shame to think that uh, Portland's just owned by um, China. Everything in the country is owned by China. We yeah, are probably. 20 zillion, gazillion, bazillion in debt, aren't we? But again, it's all debt to the banksters and their bankster countries and their bankster communities and that. So once again, the new way guillotine, fresh on steampunk radio with two E's. But we only do that at 10 in the morning till 12. And then we have Alex Jones following us, so <laughs> never thought I'd be a radio talk lead into Alex Jones. There you go. <laughs> so irony. That's kind of good. That's kind of funny. I think it is. I never bother to pay much attention to what's coming on after me, and we usually run right through the end of the hour and go to the third hour, which is not broadcast. Um, so, all- so, tell us about your show, The Feral Hippie Show, how to connect to Studio B at the right time. Um, two to four, Monday through Friday. Yep. This is my sixth year. That's a long time. Yeah. But I've- seven years for any occupation. And then after seven years, you decide if you want to renew for another seven years. And sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But I've never worked on anything other than my... uh, 14 years was how long I spent in school. That was enough time. I mean, post-high school. (laughs) I love my uh, soapbox, so... I don't know, as long as society still wants to hear what has been said or being said, then I'll stay as long as I can. I mean, right now, I really don't have anything else to do. I don't have a career. (laughs) Not like I used to. I don't play into that kind of modem. And I appreciate the ability to do what I do. Which, again, is my soapbox. Yep. And radio does give one a great soapbox. And you can use it in so many different ways. I know that each time we have a show, I go into the morning of the show now, and since I'm not responsible for setting the topics anymore... I just participate as a character in the act and have great discussions in that. But behind the scenes, what we want to do is we want to turn 
role playing into a learning experience so that when people play a role play game after they're done playing the game they've learned something about themselves and about the way the world works those two ones I was talking about back when we started talking about Fibonacci before we drifted off into other things Mm -hmm. that we do so anything interesting in your skies lately at all? Actually, we've had a thunderstorm that really dumped a whole lot of water all at once. That huh? was really fun to watch the lightning and thunder, and it was flew overhead and went by. That was about two days ago. But for the most part, I've seen individual streaks of chemtrail. But I have not seen the full bore spraying that we used to get in Oregon. Of course, I'm somewhere mysteriously hidden in the southwest, and it might just be that it's not worth spraying here because all the spray would then go over to Mexico, and they want to spray Americans and not Mexicans. The clouds aren't real. That's where we would get our food if we're not growing it here. That's why they're doing Mexico. But the, the skies, they don't look like chemtrails anymore, but they don't look like real clouds either. They are all patchy, like thin cotton. It's really, they're ugly. Do they look like they are uh, cloaked ships? They, well, some of them actually look like they were rolls of um, harped water, like waves. The ones I've seen up here, I just didn't get a picture of them. Which I should have. I didn't. I didn't get a picture of them. And I can see that they're still laying them down. So, And you know I'm in western North Carolina. So, Yeah. In fact, if it looks like my journeys take me through there, I'll let you know. I would be riding with other folks, and it would probably only be a quick, hi, how are you, here's a hug, let's have lunch and run. But timing, once I figure out I'm going that way, I'll set a map and figure out what can be done. Well, that would be an interesting journey. That's a nice idea. It depends on the east-west route that I'd take. But if things work out the way I think they're going to work out, being a backpacker and touring the country might be a good way of testing the pulse of the people in introducing a new way. That's a thought. Because definitely we have to take everything we thought we knew and weigh it again. Yeah. ways that we've used seem to be reaching beyond our bio capacity of the world so that the ecological footprints that we've made are something that is way beyond our ability to come back with just walking away from the problem and thinking it would go away right yeah, there's going to be a lot of people overrun by conditions they didn't recognize were occurring around them because they just didn't have their eyes open. And uh, But otherwise, we're at the top of the hour, sweetheart. I appreciate you joining me today. Yeah, I'm sorry I was late, but the technology fail was that I trusted the technology to tell me when I had a message come in. And I should know better and pay better attention to time. But I was in a business meeting, so I would have been late whether I knew what time it was or not. (laughs) It's all good, my darling. And I'm glad and we'll get together when you are able again next week. Okay, take care. Oh, you never take care as they weigh you down and then you don't get anything done. But to keep it safe and, you know... Keep it strong. Love you. Later. Alrighty then. So everybody have a great Saturday. 
Don't forget we are listener supported. So please do the donate click and try the seed packs or whatever else is there to occur. So later. information each and every day revolution radio never sleeps revolution radio is worldwide and borderless information revolution radio is also commercial free revolution radio is supported 100 percent by you the listeners and that's why we appeal to you to donate and support this station and its expenses you can support us in many available options like archive subscriptions our seed pack selections or even my woodworking store and we also even have revolution radio's swag at the revolution radio zazzle store in which you can get t-shirts coffee cups even a baby onesie or you can just plain donate to the cause we cannot continue without your support and your support is what helps pay the bills so please if you wish us to continue Please stop by our station support page and drop a dime on us. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Extendivite really works. Just listen to what some people have to say. Several years ago, I was developing a very uh, severe situation. I called it my flippy heart. It just was doing not good things. And I did not want to go to a medical doctor because uh, I just knew they would give me a cover-up pill. I didn't want to get onto that sort of thing at all. When I learned it was garlic and cayenne, and cayenne is a healer. It is a wonderful herb. I said, I think I'm on to something here. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be without it. It did wonderful things for me. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Call now. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life. 